from the magnificent Menzies Building here at Monash University. Welcome back to First Year Economics. The topic is international trade. In this presentation, we're going to look at the effect of an import tariff. What is an import tariff, you say? Well, an import tariff is just a fancy name for a tax on imports. So we're going to analyse the effect of a tax on imports. We're going to continue to use our small country assumption. And to pick a real world example, we're going to look at an import tariff on cars. This is a situation that has existed in Australia for a long period of time. The tariffs on cars have fallen from around 100% down to about 5% in 2014. What is the effect of that tax on imported cars? Well, let's start off with our standard trade diagram. We've got the situation here where we're looking at an import. So the world price, PW, is below the autarky domestic price, P0. The level of imports is going to be the difference between the quantity domestic consumers want to buy at the world price, that's given by the domestic demand curve, and the quantity of cars that domestic producers want to sell at the world price, given by the supply curve. So the level of imports here is simply this gap between QD and QS. Let's suppose that the government puts a tax given by T dollars on the imports of cars. What's that going to do to the price of cars as seen by domestic sellers and domestic buyers? Well, we used to be able to import cars at PW, but now when we buy a car from overseas, the price that we pay overseas hasn't changed, but now we have to hand some money over to the government. So for example, if PW is $20,000 and T is $2,000, then when we import a car from overseas, we would now have to pay $20,000 plus $2,000 tax, $22,000 altogether. So our new tariff distorted price that we will pay for cars from overseas is given by PB, which is the world price plus the tax. My claim is that this new higher tax distorted world price is going to be the price that buyers in Australia pay for cars. So given the tax distorted world price, buyers will now buy fewer cars. They'll only want to buy QCD cars so we're going to have a reduction in the number of cars that are sold in Australia, both domestically produced and imported cars. But also, this new tax distorted world price will become the domestic price for Australian car manufacturers. So the home country car manufacturers will also receive a higher price for their cars and they will want to sell more cars. They'll want to sell QTS cars. So my claim is that domestic car production will also rise. Of course, if domestic consumption falls and domestic car production rises, that means that something must fall and that's going to be the level of imports. The gap between the amount consumers buy and the amount domestic producers supply is going to fall, so the level of imports, which is given by this gap, is going to decrease. So why is this the case? Let's start by looking at the supply curve that faces domestic consumers in Australia. Well, if the price is down here under the world price, just as before, we won't be able to buy any cars off the rest of the world, so the supply curve is just the domestic supply curve. What about the gap between the tax distorted price and the world price? Well again, if buyers only pay a price in here, they're not going to be able to buy from the rest of the world. They need to pay at least PW plus T to both pay the government and pay PW to the car manufacturers overseas. So if they're paying less than that, the only people who are willing to supply them will be domestic car manufacturers. Once you take out the government's share, the government's tax, it's not worthwhile 
for the overseas sellers to sell to Australia. So, if we're in this gap between PB and PW, the supply curve to Australia is still just the domestic supply curve. What happens when we hit the tax-distorted world price? Well, now the government gets its T dollars, the overseas sellers get PW, and of course we can buy as many cars as we like from the rest of the world at a price PW. That's our small country assumption. So when we factor in the tax, we can buy as many cars as we like at PW plus T. The government takes the T, and PW is paid to overseas producers. So given that effective supply curve in Australia, where's the equilibrium? Well, it's going to be where that solid green curve crosses domestic demand at the higher tax distorted price and at a quantity QTD. One of the things to note here is that the tax is only on imported cars. That's why the supply curve follows the domestic supply curve. Domestic producers don't have to have a tax on their cars until we hit the world price plus the tax. It's only the imports that have to pay a tax to the government. What about the domestic suppliers of cars? Well, if the price is up here above PW plus T, Domestic suppliers won't be able to sell any cars at those prices. Why not? Well, because domestic consumers will just buy the imports. At all these prices up above PW plus T, domestic consumers can pay the government for T dollars, pay PW to the overseas sellers, and buy the imports. What about if a price hits exactly PW plus T? Well, at that point, buyers will either buy domestic or imported cars. They don't care. At that price, they're quite happy to buy domestic cars, but they can also buy imported cars. So from the point of view of domestic sellers, the demand curve is horizontal. Once the price gets lower, then the demand curve is just going to follow the domestic demand curve. So, where is the equilibrium? Well, it's where the domestic supply curve cuts this import-adjusted domestic demand curve. That's going to be at the quantity QTS and at the higher price. One of the things that sometimes worries students is that we've had a price rise, not just for imported cars, but also for domestically produced cars. But if a tax is only on imports, why has the price gone up to the domestic cars as well? Well, let's think about it. Let's imagine that the price for domestic cars was below PW plus T. Now, we can't buy any cars from the rest of the world at a price below PW plus T because after we pay the tax to the government, we can't afford to buy them off the rest of the world. There's not enough money left. We don't have PW left. So if the domestic price is below PW plus T, everybody will be wanting to buy domestic cars. But the trouble is, the domestic supply isn't high enough, there's an excess demand. What happens when there's an excess demand? The price goes up. When does the price stop going up? When it's gone up to the point where the difference between domestic supply and domestic demand can be met by imports. So the domestic price, not just for imported cars, but for domestically produced cars, has to rise up to the tax-distorted world price in order to ensure there isn't an excess demand for domestic cars. So in summary, a tax or a tariff on imported cars will push up the price that Australians pay for all cars, whether they're the imported cars or domestically produced cars. There will be an increase in the quantity of domestic cars supplied, but there will be a decrease in the quantity of cars, both domestic and imported, that are demanded. And that means that the quantity of imports must fall to a smaller level once we've got the tax in place. Now, let's ask our normal question, who wins 
Who loses and why? Let's do the welfare economics. Here we've labelled all the relevant areas, A, B, etc., right through to K over here. Let's start off with a case under free trade. Well, remember, under free trade, the price Australians paid for cars was PW. Given that price, domestic suppliers are willing to supply QS cars and they get producer surplus, given by area D. At that price PW, domestic consumers want to buy QD cars. So they buy QS domestic cars and the rest of the cars they buy, up to QD, are made up of imports. What's a consumer surplus? Area under demand, above price up to quantity. It's area A, B, C, E, F, G, H, J and K. And here we've put it on our table. Consumer surplus, producer surplus, add them up and you get total surplus. Now let's look at the case with an import tariff. Once the import tariff T is in place, sellers in Australia can sell for PW plus T and buyers have to pay PW plus T for cars. So the producer surplus, well now producers receive price PW plus T, they sell QTS cars, their producer surplus is C plus D. What about consumers? Well, they face the price PW plus T, they buy QTD cars, their consumer surplus is the area A, B, E and F. Let's but there's one more group we have to consider, that's the government. The government is levying a tax of T dollars on every imported car. So the tax per car is given by the height T, the number of imported cars is given by the difference between domestic demand and domestic supply. So, the tax revenue for the government is the pink shaded area H plus J, tax times quantity of imports. So here it is on our table. We've got the consumer surplus with the tariff, A plus B plus E plus F. We've got the producer surplus with the tariff, D plus C. We've got the government revenue with the tariff, H plus J. And all together, that gives a total surplus after the tariff, A, B, C, D, E, F, H, J. Just adding them up. What are the changes? Well, notice that consumers have lost C, G, H, J and K. Notice that some of that has been transferred because the producers have gained area C. So area C is a transfer from consumers to producers. Notice also that some is transferred to the government. The government gets H plus J and so H plus J is a transfer from the consumers to the government through the tax revenue. But that still leaves some extra. That leaves G and K as a loss to society. Why is that a loss? Let's start with area G which we've shaded in pink. Notice that area G refers to the new cars that are produced domestically after the tariff is in place. It refers to the increased domestic production. Why is G a loss? Well remember that the cars that we produce domestically after the tariff we used to buy from overseas. How much did they cost us? Well, before the tariff, those cars used to cost us PW per car. So the total cost to Australia of getting those cars from overseas, importing them into Australia, is given by the blue rectangle. What about once we have the tariff in place? Well, remember that these cars are now being produced domestically and the cost of those cars is given by the area under the marginal cost curve or the area under the supply curve. So it's the orange shaded area here. No Notice that the orange shaded area is bigger than the amount we used to pay for these cars when we imported them. The amount of resources we use up to produce those cars in Australia exceeds the cost of just importing the cars. How much more are we spending in terms of resources to get those cars when we produce them in Australia? Exactly Area G. So Area G represents resources we are effectively throwing away in Australia. We could buy the cars cheaper from overseas. Instead, we're using our scarce resources, our labour 
our manufacturing capacity to produce cars less efficiently than we could buy them from overseas. That's a real loss to Australia. That's going to be a deadweight loss. But what about our other loss? Area K. Well, that one's pretty easy. Notice that Area K refers to cars that we used to buy under free trade. However, once the tariff is in place, we no longer buy those cars. We consume fewer cars in Australia. How much consumer surplus were we getting from those cars? Well, we were paying PW for those cars. So the net consumer surplus from the cars, area under demand, above the price we're paying over those units of cars, is area K. Once the tariff is in place, we're no longer consuming those cars. So we've lost that consumer surplus. Area K is gone. It's another deadweight loss. So now we can summarise our results. When we put a tariff on imports, we have a loss to domestic consumers. They will buy fewer cars and they'll pay a higher price for those cars. In contrast, domestic producers will gain from the tariff. They'll sell more cars at a higher price. They'll get more producer surplus. Unsurprisingly, you're going to see the producers lobbying for the tariff. What about the government? Well, the government gets some tax revenue. They get the tariff T times the new lower level of imports. But overall, Australia loses from putting the tariff in place. It loses area G plus K. They've got two parts. The first bit is the inefficient production, area G. We're now using our resources to make something we could buy cheaper from overseas. And we get the lost gains from trade K. We used to get consumer surplus from those imports of area K. We no longer import those cars, so we've lost those consumer surplus. The deadweight loss to Australia of putting a tariff on cars is G plus K. That's all for tariffs. Talk to you next time about quotas.